So trauma, if we think about the, the word trauma, Greek for injury. So trauma is really a physical context, isn't it? A physical wound. We say that there was trauma to the to the skin or to the, the tissue or the, the bone. So trauma is a, an event, um, a deeply distressing or disturbing event. And then we have a response to that event, a psychological or emotional response to that event. So as you can, as those of you that are saying suicide, for example, would be absolutely the trauma for the family members managing this response. So if you look at it in a wider context, it could be I'm walking down um, a dark street at night and I get attacked and someone takes my, my phone or my bag. My response to that though may be very different to someone else's. So someone else might be a bit shaken and bounce back. Someone else might not leave the house for a month. So we've all got different responses to trauma. And when we start to see it as, you know, the lens that we're talking through today, it's an out of control or frightening experience that completely disconnects us from all sense of our ability to cope. So our sense of the resources we have internally or around us, support resources or within myself, um, or my sense of safety or, or love in the world is being completely shattered. So my ability to cope is much less than the overwhelming nature of this trauma and how, it, how I'm experiencing it. So we just, we don't want to necessarily separate the two for semantics or, you know, for any strong definition. It's really just to acknowledge that there is some difference in life generally. Um, absolutely, there can be crossover and overlap though. So if we think about grief is the response to loss where trauma is the distressing event or experience or injury. So it might be useful to think about it in that way. And often the responses are similar. So again, there's overlap. We don't necessarily need to break it down, yet it's useful for us to have that language. And What's really useful for us now to start thinking about is, and we talked about vicarious grief, is when we start to experience it indirectly from somebody else's distress. So when we started talking about, uh, you know, I'm tearing up listening to what they're going through or I'm having a reaction or, you know, I might need to switch off when I get home, this is where it starts to impact me on a secondary level, even though the grief has not occurred to me directly, my body and my brain is almost reacting as if it is. Hi, I'm Emmy Golding, Director of Psychology for the Workplace Mental Health Institute. We hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. We have more and more videos being released each week. So when you subscribe, you'll get a notification letting you know when a new one's just been published. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't miss out on this vital information for yourself, your colleagues and your loved ones.